first step in every updo that I do is going to be prepping the hair. So I use my flexible hold hairspray. This one is Masterpiece by Bedhead, which I love. And I just go through and I do a light spray across the entire head. And so what I'm doing is just giving it a light coating of hairspray and I'm gonna brush through it. And that will just allow me to disperse the product and get it all the way through. And what this also does is just gives me some time to think about the updo that I'm about to do. I can feel the hair, kind of get an idea of the texture. I get an idea of any, um, like, uh, the shapes of the head and just any nuances about the person that I'm working with by brushing through. I can kind of see if the hair is going to be frizzy, if it's going to be really slippery and sleek. I'm starting to think about the products that I want to use and the technique that I'm going to do while I'm brushing through. Um, something else that I always do is check the scalp if it needs any dry shampoo, um, if it needs any little texture powder to kind of give it a little grit, and if I see any big colics or anything that I want to make sure to look out for. So. That's what I'm looking for when I'm brushing through the hair to start out and it just gives me some time to kind of map out the head and give me a chance to think about the updo that I'm going to do. So that's why I, I brush through and I also like to get the flexible hold hairspray into the hair so I can prep it and be ready to go when I start to curl by knowing that I've got some grip to it um, but it's not enough to make it crunchy, just enough to hold some of those initial curls in the shape that I'm going to do. So that is the first step of any duck do that I do. It's brushing through, getting the texture spray on the scalp, getting the flexible hairspray through the ends and just brushing through and getting kind of an overall map and, um, and guideline for how I wanna get going on the hair. So then the next thing that I do is section it out. So for this particular updo, since we're doing something low and we're doing sort of like a loose bun, I am gonna actually style from the top down. So sometimes I pin the top away and I work on the bottom and then I bring the top in. But for this one, I'm gonna do the top first because I want to make it just kind of loose and relaxed and so I'm gonna style the front and the top of the hair first and then do the bun last. So the first thing that I wanna do is section out the front pieces because I know I wanna have some left around her face. So this mannequin head doesn't really have any short pieces but you can kind of get the, the gist of what you would want to leave out. So usually some kind of right around the face framing the fringe, you can leave some of that out and just get an idea for how much you want to have left out around the front of her face. So typically on a person that's going to be natural because people have a lot of breakage in front um, or they already have bangs and so it's easy to see. If you're working with someone who doesn't have any fringe but they want to have pieces out for the actual day of their wedding, what I recommend doing is leaving out the long pieces that maybe you wouldn't actually want to have them be that long, but that way they can get an idea of what it looks like and they can bring a photo to their hairstylist to get that trimmed to match their updo so they know how much to leave out to kind of create that fringe around their face. So you're going to kind of get an idea of what you want left out in the front. And so you can see I've left some pieces out there. And then we're gonna go on to the back. So now that that is sectioned away, I'm gonna section out the very, very top of the crown. So I am gonna just take kind of a half semicircle over the top here and clip that away. So I have some top, some of the top of the hair to work on the volume and kind of lay over the top to make sure it's really frizz free, that it looks really perfect, and that I can kind of create the shape that I want. So it's sort of a semicircle around the crown, the very top of the hair. It's not a ton, but just enough to make sure you have hair to lay over the top, come over the top of the updo. So I'm gonna section this away. And now I can start to work on pinning the bulk of the beginning of my updo here. So we're gonna pin this section here and then bring this down over the top and then we're gonna create our bun. So to get started, I am going to use some of my favorite dry um, texture spray and that's from Kenra. And I am just gonna go through and spray a little bit at the roots. So what I'm thinking about when I'm doing this is how much volume and how much texture I wanna have in the subdue. 
And so if you are working with someone who wants no volume, then you might not want to do any texture spray at the roots because you might not do any backcombing here. But if you, most people want a little bit of volume. So if you want a little bit of volume, I recommend using texture spray at the roots because that's just going to help build some of that hold, build a little grit in there and give you that texture that you want. If you want a lot of volume, this is where you're going to start to create a lot of volume right here because this is where this section is going to lay over the top. And so if you create a lot of volume right here, it's going to give a nice, um, a nice like spot for all that to lay over. So I sprayed the roots and then I'm going to go through and back home just a little bit. So I'm taking about one inch, one inch, one inch thick sections and I'm just back homing slightly. I'm not starting all the way up here and pulling down. I'm just going about two inches from the head and pulling it down. I'll go underneath and do a little bit more. And what I'm doing when I'm back homing is just working around the head and making sure I'm doing it evenly all the way around. And that will make sure that I have a really even and balanced updo. If you only do back combing in the very back, you're gonna get flat sides. And so I just always make sure to kind of walk around my person and do even back combing all the way around. You can always comb through back combing to pull it out, but you can't add more once you start pinning. And so it's easier to do more back combing than you think you need and to, and to flatten it out a little bit later if it's too much, rather than not back combing enough and then realizing that you don't have the volume that you want. So once you get the back combing that you want, I'm just gonna smooth over this. So you can see I've got some bulk right here. And that's exactly what I want. Now, if the hair is really thin, you can do this in one swoop, but because this mannequin has thicker hair, it's longer, I'm gonna do it in three sections. So I'm gonna start pinning, figuring out where I want the top of that bun to be, and that's where I'm gonna pin the top to. So I want the bun to be pretty low, so I'm gonna pin where the head starts to curve down at the bottom. I'm gonna do three sections, one in the middle and one on each side to pin in. That way I know that I have all of the hair gathered and I can create a little bit of texture as I work. If I just pull it all in one, I don't have as much control, but if, like I said, if the hair is really fine, then sometimes you're able to pull this all in in one. So I'm gonna turn like this so you can see I've got this little back combing going on here. And before I get started, I am gonna use my favorite um, volumizing powder or texture powder, which is from Schwarzkopf. And I'm gonna spray it over the top, so, or puff it over the top, I should say. And this will just give the hair a little bit of grip before I get going. And it's also keeping the hair connected. And so as I'm touching it and working with it, it's not going to be frizzy. And that is a big thing with working with updos is you want to make sure that as you work, you're working clean, you're using the right amount of products, and that will help you to not get these frizzy, crazy strands going on if you are using and layering products as you work. So I'm going to start in the center. I'm going to gather the hair here. So I'm kind of taking the majority of the section from the top all the way to where I'm going to pin in my hand. And I'm going to twist it and then pull it gently just to get a little bit of texture and volume. And because I have that texture spray and the volumizing powder in here, it's pulling out really nicely. And then I'm going to pin flat against the head. So these are kind of like foundational pinning. This is foundational pins. This is where your bun's gonna be. And I do two pins crossed over just for extra security. And then I'll do one more coming in this side. And if that's in a good spot, so I step back and just make sure it's pinned how I want, then I will go ahead and spray. And that will help you to work clean and smooth and make sure you're not getting frizz. Now I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna gather actually all the hair aside from the pieces that I want to keep out in front. And I'm going to do the same thing. So if you think it's getting kind of frizzy and you maybe need a little more texture spray or you need a little volumizing powder, this is the time to use it. Especially if the hair is like really sleek and really clean, you really want to layer on this texture powder. Powder really helps hair that's virgin and doesn't want to do anything. It helps give it a lot of grip. So I'm going to twist it and then I'm just gonna pull it gently out and this hair is not frizzing 
because of the products that I have used. So I know that one of the biggest problems people have with updos is keeping them clean and neat. And one of the hard things with that is because now so much of the style is more undone and a little more messy, but messy can look really unprofessional and not clean if it's frizzy. So you can still have kind of a messy and undone updo without it being frizzy. And the way to do that is to use products. So let me swoop around this way. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm gathering hair from the ear. And if her hair is super, super thick, don't be afraid to do this in, in four sections. So you can take as many smaller sections as you need to gather this top hair if the hair is super, super thick. So I'm putting on my powder and I'm twisting it and I'm just gently holding it in my hands and then I'll hold it with my thumb, pull it out just slightly to make sure that it's falling in line with the rest of the hair that I've pinned and then I'm gonna pin this. And so I'm pinning these all kind of on top of each other at the base of where I want the top of that bun to be. So I'm keeping that in mind as I work is just the location of where I want the bun. So the whole time I'm doing an updo, I do think about sort of the finished product and I'm just doing one step at a time to get to that finished product. And if I'm working with intention on each piece, each section of hair, that really helps me to have control and helps me to make sure that I'm not just throwing hair in random places that aren't gonna achieve the look and the overall goal that I want. So once that's all secure, you can do spray over the top, the flexible hold hairspray, and I'm not really gonna touch this anymore. So this is the beginning step. I've gotten the whole front secured. I've got a little bit of volume back here, and now I'm gonna pull over the top. So there's a couple options you have here. If you want it to be very, very full, then we wanna create a little more back combing right here at the top. If you don't want it to be very full, you don't have to do that. If you want a lot of texture, you can create some curls and texture in here now. Um, I'm gonna do a more of a simple look. So I'm gonna create a little bit of texture just by pulling out with my fingers, but I'm not gonna do a lot of curls or twists in this particular updo. But this is the point where you would do that if you wanted a lot more curls or texture at the top you could curl this section and then pull it over so what i'm going to do first is go through and use the texture spray throughout the top so we're going to just spray this here at the root and then i'm going to take another section spray here and just do that all the way up to the top now, what you really wanna think about here is not having that super awkward, like, huff right down the middle. You want this to be really balanced. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go through and back comb slightly, like I was doing before, just about two inches from the top, all the way around to make sure that I have balanced and even back combing. And I'm gonna keep the part where it's at. So I wanna have a part in this updo, and so I'm gonna back home in the style of the part. If I back home, I'll throw in combs, people. We're back. If I back home all going this way, that's gonna pull all the hair this way. So because I wanna keep this part here, I'm going to back home here in the shape that I want it to be. One of the benefits of doing an updo from the top down, so working on the top first, is you end up giving the bride a little more confidence because while you're working on the back, she can see the front that's done that she likes. And so she's feeling good about how she looks. I think sometimes when, as bridal stylists, we're working on the back of the hair for a long time and the bride is just seeing like pinned up pieces that aren't done yet, she gets a little nervous. So it is really nice to work on the front first for that reason. So now that I've got the shape, you can see I'm just kind of combing in the direction I want the hair to go and laying it over the top. So you can use a tail comb like this. You can also use a prong, metal prong comb like this to pull through the back combing and make sure it's really clean. 
So I'm facing her towards you so you can see how I would work in the mirror um, to make sure I get the right amount of volume for my bride. I would face her to the mirror. I would ask her if she's liking how that's looking in front. I would sort of hold it loosely so she can see and tell me if she wants more volume or not. And this is where I would adjust the volume on the front and adjust kind of how she wants it to lay over her ears, how loose she wants it to be. If she wants it tight, if she wants it low, um, or if she wants it loose like this or tight in, all those things. This is where I would work on that with the bride to make sure you're getting the look that she wants. So I'm just combing this over the top and kind of laying it in the way that I want it to go. And then I'm going to spray this with texture spray again. So spraying over the top with texture spray, not hairspray, because this brings the frizz down, any flyaways. This really helps like the stickiness of it helps it stay in, but it's, it's kind of like a matte sticky. It's not hairspray sticky, so it's still workable, which is fantastic. And now I'm going to pin this into the bottom. So the way I'm going to do that is not just bring it in and flat. I'm going to take small sections and pin it in so I can kind of create a more textured look. I'm going to start again from the middle and I start from the middle because then I can have balance. So I start in the middle and then work on each side to make sure I'm balanced on each side. And I'm going to start with the crown here and I'm just taking kind of the middle here and I didn't divide it all the way up to the top because I want to maintain the smooth integrity of the top that I've created. I'm going to twist it and hold it super loosely and I'm just going to make sure it's loose and textured. So I'm holding it loosely and pulling softly just kind of at random spots to create that texture that I want. And by holding it loosely down here, it helps the hair just to create that texture. And I'm going to pin it into the pieces that I've already got pinned down here. And then I can finish with a little hairspray just to kind of lock in that texture. And what you can do to create even more texture is do a hairspray, pinch with your fingers, just a small section, and then use your other two fingers to kind of run it down and continue on to create that little bit of a ridge. So it's not just a really intense ridge, it's just a little bit of a ridge to create a little bit of texture using hairspray in your fingers. Very slight but just creates a little bit of texture here. Now we're gonna bring in this side. So it's very similar to what I did with the underneath, but leaving out this top layer first just gives me a little more control to create more texture here and just to create um, a more refined look. I'm back, I was off the screen, sorry. So I'm twisting this in a little bit and then I'm gonna pin this. And same thing here, if you want to create a little texture, I will spray, pinch, and just run my finger down like this to create a little extra ridge texture right there. And then we're going to repeat on the other side. So you might need to do this one in two sections because the heavier side is very, very thick. So thicker than the other side. So if I do one, this might be too much for the bobby pin. So in that case, I'm just gonna divide it and do it in two. So you can see how I'm not doing like a hard divide from the top. I'm just gently taking what I've already arranged and bringing it in. And by doing that, then you really maintain that beautiful, smooth, polished top of the hair without making it frizzy and making sure you get that fullness, that loose look that a lot of people want and it doesn't feel too tight, which is ideal. I'm gonna pin this in the back as well. So you can do the same thing here to create the texture that you want. Use your hairspray and just run it down with your fingers and really smooth it out, making sure it's not having any frizz at all. So you can spend as much time dealing, detailing that as you need. But now before you move forward, this is where I want you to take a look at the front and just make sure you have the volume and the lift and all the things that you would want um, to go through with your bride. And the reason that we do this now is because once you start to create the bun, it's gonna be hard to go back, almost impossible actually without messing it up, to go back and actually adjust this. So this is where you wanna check in with your bride, talk about the front, Make sure it's exactly how she wants it to be. 
And like I said, I would typically not have this long of fringe in front, but this is what my mannequin has to offer. So I don't want to cut her hair. And so we're just going to leave this long fringe, but you can understand what it would look like if it was shorter. So yes, once you get the approval from your bride that this is how she wants the front to be, then we can work on the back and you'll know that she's really happy with the front and you don't have to worry about that, which is great. So one extra thing that I like to do on especially the heavier side is I will put a couple pins right around the ear because this one tends to get loose. So I'm just gonna take my pin, I'm not opening it. I'm gonna lift up the hair slightly. I'm just grabbing it with the end of the pin, pulling it towards me, and then I'm pushing it back up. And so that just gives a little extra security here and creates a little bit of lift here if you need it. And you can kind of pull it back out if you need to, but that if you do that a couple of times throughout right in here, that just helps create extra stability on this side that's above the ear. So now we've got the front perfection. We love it. Bride loves it. She's happy. Now we can work on the back. So we're going to do a low bun. Now you've noticed that I haven't done any um, curling in here because it's, it's, a waste of your time, frankly, to spend a lot of time curling before you know how much hair you're actually going to need to have curled. So if you're doing a really simple bun, you know, you might not even need to curl at all. If you're doing something more like a chignon where you're rolling it up, you really don't need to do any curls. So you want to think about what you're doing before you start curling just so you can be efficient in your time. All right, so now I'm going to divide this into three sections. So the middle is going to be my heaviest section. And then the outside edges are gonna be not quite as full as the middle. So I'm gonna divide that out. And then I have this left. And this part is what I'm gonna put into an elastic for a ponytail. And first I'm gonna spray it with my texture spray. And then if the hair is really, really hard to work with, you wanna use this magical texture powder, which is fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and spray that generously. And then I'm going to pull this into a ponytail. So I'm not doing it super tight because this is where the all the gathering of my bobby pins are. And so I know that I have a lot of security in the updo right here because this is where the foundation is of the, um, where I pulled all the rest of the hair. So this is my foundation and this is the ponytail that I'm going to create. And this is going to be the guide for my bun. So just gonna pull this tight. If you need to do two elastics, do that. And you just wanna think of where you want this to sit on the neck. So I'm doing it low here because I want it to be really low on the nape. Now I'm gonna go through and back comb a little bit. So I'm taking one inch sections again and I'm just back combing right here at the root to get a little bit of grip. And I'll go through and do that to the bottom. And that will just help create some fullness. I'm going to comb around the edges and then I'm just going to do a little bit of bend in the ends to make sure that my ends um, tuck up nicely into this. So you don't have to do a lot of curling, just a little bit. You might not need to do it at all, depending on the hair. And then I'm going to twist it. So I'm twisting this softly. And before I do any pinning, I'm going to do a little bit of my texture spray, and then I'm going to layer it with my flexible hold hair spray. And that's just going to help to really lock in this bun, and it's going to keep all this section together as I go to twist. So this is the direction that I twisted toward myself. This is the way that I curled it, and now I'm going to twist it up and around. So while I do that, I'm going to hold it in place and just kind of give myself a visual for what this bun looks like down here. So I'm not going to pin yet, but you can kind of get a visual for the shape and how it's looking. Now, because I've back combed in here and I've done the layering of texture spray and the hairspray, this is going to be really easy for me to manipulate. If you're pulling it up like this and you're trying to pull it out and make it fatter and you're finding yourself struggling because the hair is falling or not doing what you want, start again. Just go back to the drawing board, comb through it, layer with your texture spray, do some back combing, do more texture spray, do your flexible hold hair spray, and make sure this is really able, able to be manipulated, okay? So I'm twisting it up, and I'm gonna start by just pinning a little bit on this side. So you can see how this side's popping up. 
I need to have a little bit of an anchor here. So I'm taking my pin, grabbing on the inside of the bun and pushing it in to the back of the ponytail. And so as I work now, I'm gonna be pulling it loosely. So I'm pulling around the bun and because I use the texture spray, it's working nicely without getting frizzy. I'm gonna put another pin in. So I'm kind of going every probably half an inch and then I'll pull it out and adjust and do the same thing over here. Pulling it and putting another pin in. So I can put the pin into the inside of the bun. And then I'll go through and do it down here as well, just to make sure we're all secure. Now you can see I've got this little tail here and you can think about how you're gonna be balanced. So I wanna fill in this gap at the bottom. I have a gap right here and that's how I know where I'm gonna put this. So basically you're standing behind your person when you're doing these buns and figuring out how to make it balanced. So I'm gonna roll this up and pin this inside. And I still have two sections of hair to work with. So keep that in mind. And then you can just go through and use your fingers to pull it and kind of detail it in the way that you want to achieve the look that you want. So this is just kind of a really simple one. I can see this side's kind of popping out. So you wanna make this middle section as balanced as possible before you go in and pull on the sides. I'm gonna go through and use my pins just to make sure I've got all the balance that I need. And just take a look at it from all angles. And this is where there's not like a specific formula of exactly what to do. This is your eye working with the hair that you have with the length that it is to figure out what you think will look the best and create the look that your person wants the most. So this is low, it's got good balance, it's got a couple twists in here, which I like, so it's interesting. It's not just a round bun, and I like it. So I'm gonna spray it with a flexible hairspray and just make sure there's no flyaways. And I've got these two sections left. So I wanna bring these up and over and add them to the top of this bun um, to create more texture. So really, you have a lot of flexibility when you save out these two sides here. You know, you can bring it up and around if you want a, a wider bun that's flatter, you can bring it around the front if you want it to be more off the head. It's a matter of your preference and what your bride wants. So I'm gonna go ahead and curl this, which means I'm gonna spray this first with flexible hold hair spray. I'm going to comb through it, and then we're gonna curl it. And I'm curling it toward the bun because I'm gonna have this come up and over. If I curl it away from the bun, the curl is gonna go in the wrong direction. So we'll do this side first. Pulling through with my fingers, I'm gonna do some flexible, or sorry, texture spray at the root. I'm pretty generous with the texture spray because it really does work really well. I'm gonna back home a little bit. And it leaves you with a really um, polished updo that you're able to manipulate and create kind of that messy textured bun with, which I love. Okay, so you can see how I have a little gap from here to here. So I'm gonna pin that in even. I didn't notice that before. I'm grabbing internally and pinning that up. And this one I'm gonna come up and over, and the other side I'm gonna go under. So because I curled it towards me, now I can twist it towards me. I'm gonna spray with the texture spray. If it's really crazy, you can use later on some powder. Crazy meaning hard to, to manipulate. Twist it, and I'm gonna just gently, ever so slightly pull this out just a little bit I'm gonna pin this in on the top. So you can see it's creating a, a bun that I like here. And I'll pin it on this side. And I'm just gonna save out this section here so I can figure out how I want to, do I wanna go back, do I wanna go down? I'm gonna save this, okay? Because I wanna be able to have a minute to think about where I wanna put this. But first, I'm gonna do this side. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna spray through, comb, and then curl. And with buns, you know, there's so many options. You can do so many things, and there's so many things that brides bring you on Pinterest. Um, a lot of brides bring you just the same picture and over and over, but you have to just consider, you know, their hair texture, their hair length, um, their hair color, how it's gonna show up. 
Um, and you have a lot of creative flexibility with the buns. And they are simple and beautiful. It's just a matter of taking clean sections and working with intention with each piece. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm bringing it up, like I said before, but then I'm gonna bring it back down because I wanna fill in some of the bottom. And so I'm gonna twist it up here and loosen it just a little bit and pin it. Now I'm going over my other section. So this piece that's kind of hanging out here is just gonna just chill there for a minute. And I wanna bring this back down because I wanna fill in the bottom. So I've got a pin right here and that's where I can bend and bring it down. You can put in an extra pin if you need to, just so you can get that kind of bend right there. If it helps you to pin this away while you're working, go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna clip this up here so it's not in the way. And then I'm just gonna see where it needs to go. So it looks like I have a little gap right in here, so that's where I wanna bring it. You can use your comb, your um, metal comb, to just pull through, smooth it out. I'm gonna hold it here, check the mirror or the camera, and I'm gonna pin that into the inside of the bun. And again, with a tail like this, you can decide, do you wanna tuck it in and hide it or do you wanna use it? So I am going to put it on the inside of the bun to kind of hide it, because I don't think I need it. And then I'm just gonna pull this out. So if you have the right amount of texture spray and the right amount of products in there, you can really manipulate the hair to get the bun you want. Okay, last piece is here. And makes sense for me to pull it over here. So, like I said before, I don't necessarily have a formula for you for the bun. It's using your creativity, but you can see how I'm just doing one section at a time and deciding where I should place it. And what I'm doing with this end here is back combing a little bit underneath because that gives me more flexibility and more hair to spread out and place. If you don't do that and you just keep the end kind of pulled together, you're gonna just get a tighter, more defined look. And I want this to be a little softer and smoother. So I'll just pull it over, and kind of spread it out, decide where I want it to go. And then pin it in. So basically you just wanna make sure that you don't have any ends showing, you don't have any pins showing when you get to the end here. And so if you need to tuck anything, tuck it. If you need to tighten anything up, you can do that. Um, you just wanna stand back and make sure it's really balanced. And then go through with your pins, have her shake her head. If anything feels loose, come through and do any more additional pinning that you need to, just to make the bun really beautiful and perfect. And then once it's done, you can finish with a shine spray and a really hard hold hairspray. And then the last thing that I like to do is use smoothing cream. You can also use this on the ends back there if you're leaving any little pieces out around the nape of the neck or um, just have any ends that are kind of extra fly away -y. Put a little bit in your fingertips and just rub, rub, run through the curls in the front and that will just make them really soft and smooth and make sure you don't have any crazy frizzy ends. And there you have it. With your beautiful low textured updo, I will finish this up, polish it up for you and take a few extra photos. Okay guys, thanks for joining me.